Jaron Duran is an everyday player. The Red Sox outfielder continues to shine as the hottest hitter for Boston right now as they hope to finish the season on a high note. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked on Red Sox. I'm your host, Gabby Hurlbut, former ESPN social media associate and current host of the Boston Balling Podcast, here to bring you all things Red Sox Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in and getting your daily Red Sox talk with me. This episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Swing for the fences on Sleeper picks and you could win up to 100 times your money. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked On, and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. Happy Monday and welcome to another episode of Locked on Red Sox. Excited to bring you some more Red Sox content. I'm your host, Gabby Hurlbutt, once again. On this episode, we're going to be talking about a player who is the Red Sox hottest hitter at the moment and should be playing more than he is, Jaron Duran. So we're going to be touching on what he's been doing lately for the team and why he should be playing every day. I'm also going to be talking about the Futures game with it you know, now being All-Star Week and the All-Star break and players and teams are buzzing about the top talent that exists around the league. The Futures game took place on Saturday and I'm going to be talking about the Red Sox prospects who did play in the game and how they contributed. And I'm also going to be talking about a player on a different team who could be a player to keep an eye on, um, whether that team is in the you know, mindset of wanting to sell him at the deadline is up to be debated, but could be an eye to um, keep on for the Red Sox because he could be a player that could really contribute if they do want to make a run. So lots to talk about on today's show, but Jaron Duran, I need to come out and say verbatim, should play every day. He's been the Red Sox hottest hitter as of late. He has a 591 batting average in his last seven games. Three for five with a double, single, and homer on Saturday, as well as stole a base. And on the season, he has a 319 average with a 365 on base percentage. So obviously, last season, he struggled. And I know there were people who were giving up on Duran and saying, you know, he might not pan out with the Red Sox. I, I don't really want him anymore. But this goes to show that you really have to be patient with prospects when they first come up until they find their game. He deserves to be in every player. I feel like he's earned it just in so many capacities. Obviously, we've mentioned his speed. He's fast, so he can steal bases a lot and make things happen. He can hit to every area of Fenway Park at this point. He seems to be really comfortable with hitting at Fenway. I mean, like I said in Saturday's game against the A's, three for five. Um, crushed a home run, hit a ground roll double, hit a single. So he was really doing it all. He was on cycle watch. I was really hoping he was going to get that triple to get it, but he didn't. But one thing that confuses me is that Cora doesn't play him as much as he should. I understand that no player can play every single day. There's just too many games, but he deserves to play more because on days he's not in the lineup, it's hard to justify that. As of late, you know, he wasn't in the lineup on Sunday, despite the fact that the team is now in a four day break for the all star break. So he needs to be able to play more in order to develop. This is the time now where the Red Sox need to lock in on players that they want to keep long term and allow them that space to develop. I think, you know, after the trade deadline, we'll see what happens with the roster, but. He is likely going to be the everyday center fielder moving forward. So you want to make sure that he's getting the reps in. And, you know, the same thing goes for Casas. He's another player who a lot of people were hoping would be performing better than he is at this point. But he really is showing a lot of growth, too. I mean, 225 batting average obviously isn't fantastic, but he does have a 330 on base percentage. So that, to me, shows that 
he's really been figuring out ways to get on base more and kind of read pitchers better and get better with his pitch selection and plate discipline so that he can get on base even if he's not getting a hit. So Casas is going to develop more into that. I'm really not concerned. I do believe he's going to pan out as the first baseman for the future. You just need to give it some time, just like we did with Duran, because where Duran is at right now, I think even arguably could be above where people thought he'd be at at this point. So you need to give players time to get familiar with the environment, with playing at Fenway, because as we know, Fenway isn't the easiest place to play baseball and with the fan base. We are a passionate, passionate fan base, and I love being a part of the Boston fan base. But sometimes it's hard for players to adapt to that, and especially with social media criticism these days and Twitter constantly, you know, blowing up at players who don't perform. Boston is a hard market to play in, and I love how passionate we are. But for somebody like Duran, you have to learn to block out some of that criticism and backlash as a young player who's still trying to prove yourself and just go out and play and perform. And he's doing exactly that. I think he's won over a lot of the fan base at this point. I think there were some off field issues, you know, with him last year that I could see would have, um, you know, maybe rubbed some people the wrong way, but he's performing really well. And Cora should be playing him more than he is because he has more than earned an everyday position within this lineup because what do, what do players work their way up to when they're in the minor league system and they're trying to prove themselves and they do finally get their shot at the major league level? They want to earn some consistency on the roster and just within the everyday lineup. And the more that Cora benches him, the more it could take away from this hot streak that he's on. And he's been a massive part of the offense. And if you're looking at the Red Sox rebuild in full force from, you know, the players they have in the minor league system to what they're trying to do now and accomplish with getting that young core established, Duran is going to be part of that young core moving forward. So to me, you want to have him continue to play and develop. And, you know, yeah, he might not continue how he's hitting right now for the rest of the season, because it's near impossible to maintain, you know, what he's maintaining now over the last seven game stretch, but that doesn't matter because it still shows me that he's so comfortable now with playing at Fenway. So looking at the long term, he could be a player that really, really makes an impact. And, you know, he's made some nice plays defensively in center field, too. There's been some beautiful catches he's made back there. And playing center field at Fenway is not easy. And nobody's asking for, like, a bunch of consecutive gold glove seasons from him. But if he can play solid, reliable defense in center field, then you're really getting the full package from Duran and the full, you know, experience as to why he's here. So he needs to play more, in my opinion, because he looks really, really good right now. He, like I said, is one of the Red Sox best hitters at the moment. And if they want to be really successful, then um, they should be playing him every day more. And regardless of whether the Red Sox make the playoffs this year or not, they're close. They're two and a half games out of a wild card spot. So regardless of if they make the playoffs or not, um, they still should be playing him close to every day because of the future. Like they need to really focus on what they have going in the future. And obviously Cora is the one who makes the lineup. Um, and so ultimately it's a matter of, is he the one who's trying to conserve Duran and Casas or is the front office telling him we want to get some other guys out there, whatever it is. Duran deserves an everyday spot and it's only going to help with his confidence if he plays more and he's not sitting as much as he is. So I'm on the train of play Duran every day because he deserves to be an everyday player. Coming up, I'm going to be talking about the Futures game, which took place during All-Star Weekend, Um, you know, prior to the Home Run Derby and prior to the regular All-Star game. And there were a few Red Sox prospects in the game. It's a great chance to check out the future of your team and who you have um, coming up in your system. So I'm going to be talking about that game and the Red Sox prospects that were there and what they did to really show that they deserve to be Red Sox prospects moving forward and hopefully get to the major league level. So. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life, we're faced with really tough choices and the path moving forward isn't exactly clear on what we should do. 
for me personally, I faced this experience when I got laid off from my job at ESPN during COVID. So think about, you know, a college graduate. I graduated from college in 2018. I was lucky enough to land an opportunity with ESPN a few months after graduating as my first opportunity out of college. And I really enjoyed my experience there. I mean, I was there for two and a half years. I learned a lot. I met a lot of great people. And then COVID happened. And obviously, there was a period of time where sports had shut down and Disney as a company had suffered because they had to shut down their parks. And it was just an escalation of trickling down to other you know, companies that ESPN or that Disney owns. So unfortunately, you know, they issued a mass layoff in 2020 due to COVID. And I was part of that layoff. I found out in November of 2020 that I was leaving ESPN. It was going to be my last day at the beginning of January. And it was a scary time because it was really hard to, um, you know, bounce back from that and find another job, especially in short, in sports, because it's such a competitive field. So having to, you know, land another job in that was definitely a challenge. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. And it's so true. Keeping me in that mindset of being confident and feeling like I'll find another really good opportunity was challenging, but I definitely did um, have the help I needed. And I encourage you to as well, if you're going through a tough time in any sort, we all go through that. It's life, you know, and obstacles are, are really, really tough, but you can get through it if you, you know, have the support and have the help that you need. Let therapy be your map with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on MLB today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on MLB. So I encourage you to check it out, um, you know, if, if you're going through a hard time. It's stressful being in your career and having to find another job because you were laid off from a job you really liked at a really reputable company within the sports industry. But I was able to bounce back and, um, you know, happier than I could have ever imagined now with where I'm at in my career. So definitely check out BetterHelp. So obviously it's all-star weekend. We're, you know, all excited about um, what's to come with the home run derby being tonight and then the all-star game tomorrow night, which by the way, do you prefer the home run derby or the all-star game? I've always wondered which one people prefer because I personally enjoy the home run derby more. I just think it's cool to see all the players that are in it and showcase their talent, but which one do you prefer? I think it, it could go either way, really. Um, let me know in the comments because I'm curious. But so the Futures game is a cool part of the All-Star festivities that took place on Saturday. And the Red Sox did have a few prospects that participated in the game. So Marcelo Meyer, obviously we know he's the Red Sox, you know, top prospect right now. The excitement surrounding him is warranted because he'll probably be up at the majors pretty soon. So he got the start at shortstop for the American League. He made a strong defensive play in the first inning, and he also hit a single up the middle and stole second base. So that alone shows versatility, really small window. His day ended after that, but it's still a good sign that's promising because it shows that he has versatility. He can do multiple things on the field. He can hit, he can steal bases, he can play defense. And a shortstop that plays good defense is definitely something that the Red Sox will really appreciate when he does come up. So that's definitely exciting um, because, you know, he is the future at shortstop. He's definitely somebody who the Red Sox, you know, can be excited about moving forward. And he's absolutely killing it at the minor league level and in double A. So I'm excited to see what he can do as he progresses through the system. Another player who played in the Futures game for the Red Sox was Nick York. He actually started at second base. He played a little bit longer in the game. He hit a double to left center to open the fifth inning and ended the day one for three. So another player who showed kind of his strength at the plate and being able to hit hard baseballs. So he was able to just, um, you know, crush one through the opening um, to open the fifth inning. So he made some noise as well. Um, another player that I talked about on the show on Friday, he's somebody who the Red Sox can really look forward to coming up as well. So those two players in Meyer and York, we kind of expected to be players who moving forward will contribute for the Red Sox. 
as they're as they make their way through the system. But a third player who participated for the Red Sox, that's definitely somebody to be of note, is pitcher Louis Guerrero. He's pitching really well in Double A right now. Um, he he's three for one with a one eleven earned run average. 16 hits, 20 walks, and 31 strikeouts and 32 and one third innings pitched. This is important to note because the Red Sox definitely lack some pitching depth at the minor league level, which I'm hoping, you know, they can kind of get more of over the next couple of years in general. Um, but this could be a player that's exciting to watch out for as a Red Sox fan, a pitcher who could hopefully keep moving his way through the system and eventually work his way up to the point where he can be reliable for the Red Sox. He's 22 years old. He was a 17th round pick in the 2021 draft. So because he was picked late, there wasn't really a lot of hype surrounding him when he was drafted, but he's pitched out of the pen when he's been here. He only pitched to one batter um, in the Futures game. It was in the seventh inning and he recorded a strikeout on a 100 mile per hour fastball. So I say all of this because we should be aware of some of these players that we have coming up and Guerrero is definitely a player to watch out for and keep an eye on because obviously, like I said, he's been doing well at the double-A level. So hopefully at some point he gets the chance to move up to triple-A and really showcase his skills there and show what he can do because um, the Red Sox definitely need the pitching depth. And, you know, it's obviously hard to know who's going to pan out and who's not, which always makes it difficult about the draft. But If the Red Sox can really get some young pitching in their system to round it out, that could be a really, really strong pitching, you know, system and then could just make for a better farm system in general that moves the Red Sox into the top farm systems in the country with, you know, being in that conversation. So they want to definitely, um, you know, invest in somebody like him, allow him to continue his development and continue his growth because, I think he just being able to put his name out there in the Futures game and just showcase his talent, even in the slightest capacity. I mean, going out there and doing what you're supposed to do. It's as simple as that. He goes out there and he records a strikeout, which is quite literally the job of a pitcher. So he did what he had to do. And, um, you know, he, along with the other two players for the Red Sox that played in the Futures game, this is so important to note that these guys are going to be the future of the Red Sox. And if they're going out and they're performing well in in in-game situations where there's pressure and there's a lot of eyes on them, that's really promising because obviously a lot of baseball fans like to watch the futures game and know what the future of the game is and the future of the sport. And the Red Sox now are really in a better place with the farm system than they've been in a long time. And so being able to watch players like that, do their thing in a game like that among other young stars that could eventually be the future of the game is really exciting to see them match up with those players because it's validating in a way that the Red Sox process of fixing the farm system and helping to make adjustments to the farm system as needed and really building things up so that they can have a strong farm system is working. And I know that I feel good about what the Red Sox have, you know, coming up in the future, obviously, hopefully um, they are able to keep all these players and um, they all eventually get the chance to come up because if this is the future of what the Red Sox system looks like, we are in really good hands with the farm system. And I'm really excited about Meyer. I'm really excited about York. Guerrero is definitely a little bit lesser of a name that people aren't as familiar with, but it definitely also is um, exciting to know that there's a solid pitching prospect in the system like that, who's been pitching really well in double A because you can take his numbers more from double A more so than just obviously the one batter he faced in the futures game. And you can feel good about it and say, Oh, Hey, um, you know, Louis Guerrero is a pitcher that we have that could come up and has a lot of potential. So that's really exciting for the Red Sox as an organization. So we'll see what happens with the farm system. And hopefully these players are able to continue to develop and continue to grow because the future definitely looks bright. So coming up, I'm going to be talking about a pitcher who's on a team that, is definitely underperforming based on expectations this year. They were definitely supposed to be a lot better than they are as of right now. Um, But he could be a pitcher for the Red Sox to keep an eye on if the team decides to sell. Um, And this is the Padres. So coming up, I'm going to be talking about a Padres pitcher who, um, you know, 
could possibly be moved if they decide to sell. So that's all coming up next. Sleeper is a really, really fun fantasy sports app. You can make a lot of um, fantasy bets, you know, um, with the all-star break in progress. Um, there's a lot of fun bets you can make in terms of who's going to hit a home run in the all-star game. Um, what Red Sox player is going to hit the first home run coming out of the all-star break against the Cubs. So it makes it really easy because it shows you actually what the most popular bets are of that day, who's taking what. So you can click on specific matchups of the day and, you know, say it comes Friday and you want to make a bet on the first game back from the all-star break when teams are, you know, starting their first, their second half schedule and they're really excited about it. You can look at the app front page and you can see, oh, let's click on Red Sox versus Cubs. Um, oh, somebody has Verdugo hitting a home run in this game. Maybe I should take that bet too because Verdugo has been hitting really well. And it's kind of like a team effort because everybody simultaneously is making their bets, but the ones that are more confident people are making, and then you can kind of gauge, okay, so I should make this same bet too. Like the idea is really to win more money by making less bets. So they want to give you up to 100 times your money that you put in just by ma making maybe one or two bets. And they want to help you make the most effective bets and be cost effective. So they really are helping to guide you through. Here's some of the biggest storylines. Here are what a lot of people are betting on. It could be smart for you to take this bet or this bet. So that's why Sleeper is a really good app, especially for fans who are new to the betting space. If you're not really sure exactly what to bet on, it gives you a great layout on the front page of every matchup for that day, what the most common bets are, and you can win up to 100 times your money because it can be really beneficial if you're just starting off with betting and you're a little bit confused as to what you should bet on to have something helpful like that. So it'll definitely guide you through the experience and what you should be doing if you download the app today. Um, so it's definitely recommended to use the Sleeper app. It really, really is, makes it so less confusing and just so easy to navigate. Use promo code Locked On and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. Absolutely check it out. It's it's fantastic. And um, it really, really coming from somebody who hasn't really had a lot of experience with sports betting personally and taking certain bets that I'm a little more nervous to make. Sleeper is definitely my favorite um, fantasy and betting app that I've used so far because it really makes it so easy. So definitely check it out and you can certainly win a lot of money while doing it. So Obviously, the Red Sox, you know, are in a weird spot right now when it comes to the trade deadline on whether they're going to buy or sell. Obviously, they've played really well lately, headed into the All-Star break, you know, playing really, really good baseball. They're super close to a wild card spot. But the question still remains and has been for the whole season whether they can maintain that or not, um, you know, and it really could go either way. I think obviously if they are continuing to play like this, then maybe they want to make some moves to build around that so that they can make a playoff push. But if they're going to continue to be as inconsistent as we've seen from them all season, then maybe they should sell. So they are really at an interesting spot with how they handle the trade deadline. Another team that has been a little bit of a disappointment compared to the talent they have is the Padres. They're 42 and 47 right now, fourth in the NL West and six and a half games out of a wild card spot. On paper, they have so much talent over there, but they haven't really lived up to the expectations for this season. So, you know, they as a front office have been pretty vocal about and seemed adamant about the fact that they want to buy at the deadline and think they can build around what they have and get into a wild card spot, but they're quite a bit back at this point. And, you know, it's going to be a really tough look if they try to build around what they have and it still doesn't change much. It's a, it's a lot of ground to gain. Obviously there's a lot of time left in the season. So I'm not saying they can't by any means. And with the talent they have on that roster, 
they should be able to turn it around at any time. But it could make sense for them to sell because they have so much talent on that team. So they could get great return on that talent. But then the question becomes, obviously, the checkbook's really big. They're paying guys a lot of money. So would teams want to take on those contracts? So the reason I bring up the Padres is there is a particular pitcher on the Padres who, since the beginning of June or really end of May, has had a fantastic, um, you know, few weeks on the mound. Blake Snell, obviously, he's been in the Red Sox division before when he played in Tampa. He was really good there, went to the Padres. And since May 25th, he's pitched nine games, 53 innings total. He's given up a total of four runs since May 25th, four runs total. With an 068 earned run average and 84 strikeouts and only 22 walks. Those are some crazy numbers. He's been really, really good. This season overall, he's pitched 18 games, given up 71 hits and 31 earned runs with 11 home runs and a 285 earned run average. So obviously, that's still pretty solid. Um, particularly since May 25th, it's been phenomenal. But overall, this season, it's been good. So Blake Snell, you know, could make sense for the Red Sox to keep an eye on if the Padres continue to play the way that they are and it doesn't seem like they're going to turn things around by the trade deadline. He's in the final year of his contract. So usually if a player's in a contract year, a team wouldn't have to give up a ton to get him because the thought process is, well, I could try to wait till he hits free agency and sign him then as opposed to giving up um, some top talent for him now. So the Red Sox... If they were to try to trade for him, likely wouldn't have to give up as many prospects as you would think they would or high level prospects just because of it being a contract year for him. The Padres might want to re-sign him in the offseason when he hits free agency, but I think that team's going to have a lot of reflecting to do if they end up finishing the season kind of in the position they're in now. Um, So he could be a great rental for the Red Sox for this year if they are going to make a playoff push. And then, um, you know, if they decide they want to re-sign him or extend him after that, then they could try to do that when he, when it hits the, you know, off season. So I think he's in a great spot right now. They wouldn't have to be taking on a huge contract um, for him. He was making sixteen thousand um, to start this season, but the fact that he's in a contract year and he's pitching as well as he is could be a good sign. I do worry about consistency with him. His career has been a little up and down. Obviously, he's had some injuries, but in general, he, um, you know, has had a pretty up and down career. But he's pitching really, really well right now. Again, this might not all be able to pan out if the Padres still decide they want to buy at the deadline. But they have a lot of talent that they could move for some great pieces. So if they're still where they're at now, come the trade deadline, it really could make sense for them to sell. And Blake Snell, I'm looking at him, you know, as a player to definitely look at to be moved. And if that is the case, the Red Sox should absolutely keep an eye on him because of the season he's having. Because if the Red Sox are, you know, in a spot by the trade deadline where they are in a wild card spot or one or two games out and they decide they want to buy he could be a logical choice to really help enhance the pitching staff um, as the season progresses as a rental to really help make that push. So Blake Snell is a guy I I feel could be worth looking into and um, just worth pursuing and just keeping an eye on because the Red Sox need pitching anyway. Um, but if they are serious about making a push this year and they decide that they want to roll with what they have and not sell – um, Blake Snell is a pitcher on my list that could definitely potentially be movable because the Padres, you know, obviously right now they seem insistent that they could keep what they have and try to make a run, but they might decide to, you know, sell because they have so much talent that could be moved for good pieces. So we'll see what happens there. It obviously needs to be worked out where the Padres decide they want to sell and the Red Sox decide they want to buy. And obviously I still very much am unsure what the Red Sox are going to decide to do. But if they do decide to acquire some players, Blake Snell could make a lot of sense, especially with the pitching injuries right now and somebody who has had a good season that could provide value on the mound. Thanks for tuning in to Lockdown Red Sox. Um, I'm really excited about the next two days with All-Star Week. Um, Who do you have winning the Home Run Derby tonight? Put that in the comments. 
reply to me on Twitter. Let me know who your choice is to win the home run derby. I'm curious what some of the responses are. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. The all-star game is always a good time. And then obviously Friday we get back to Red Sox baseball at the historic Wrigley Field. So excited for that as well. Let me know who your pick is to win the home run derby. I will catch you all on the flip side. And thank you for tuning in as always to Locked on Red Sox, your team every day.